The evening's going well. Anna is determined to look and smell her best. Smell dominates our lives, consciously and unconsciously, from the moment we are born. Smell and taste are a baby's first senses. They work well before his sight and hearing are fully developed. The first taste buds developed when the fetus was just seven weeks old. He may have acquired some food preferences then, as spicy aromas seeped into the fluid-filled womb. While breastfeeding, an infant learns more about the flavors of his mother's world. The aroma of what she eats, maybe even the perfume she wears, gets into his milk. Soon, these tiny food critics develop taste preferences. If the mother has been eating garlic, most babies will suck longer. They'll take less if she's had a glass of beer. Tiger baby. The early bond between mother and baby is forged through smell. His first smell is his mother. At just six days old, he can single her out by smell, although he can't recognize her by sight. A cloth carrying her scent will calm him down, and it's a two-way street. She can pick out her own child's garments from a pile of dirty clothes. One sniff, and the effects can spread to all corners of the brain. As a woman samples perfume, a brain activity scan demonstrates the power of smell. Hot spots light up in the front of the brain as it stirs memories. Areas in the back of the visual cortex show she's picturing a scene. The brain of a three-month-old baby shows an even bigger reaction. His first smell of chocolate floods all parts of his brain with sensation. Smells also trigger the pituitary gland, which controls the body's hormone system. Its chemical messengers influence our health and our moods. <laughs> Clearly, smells play an important role in human behavior. They may even put us in the mood for love. The smells our bodies produce have a surprisingly strong effect on other humans. As we get closer, or simply hotter, we begin to produce our own body smells. It's an odor as individual as a fingerprint. The smelliest regions are our armpits and sex glands. Here we have a huge number of glands producing oil and sweat. Each of us has two million sweat glands. Sweat itself has no smell, but bacteria break down the secretions and release body odor. A whole colony of bacteria thrive on this single armpit hair. This woman is waging chemical warfare against body odor. She is a deodorant tester, a soldier in the battle against offendingly foul bacteria. We go to a lot of trouble to disguise our natural smells, but the most potent of all sex attractants is secreted by our own skin. A molecule called a pheromone may make ardent lovers out of us all. Many foods are said to be the messengers of love. Scientists dispute that aphrodisiacs exist, 
but all these foods have a startling common thread. They contain a chemical identical to human pheromone. The molecule found in human odor and aphrodisiacs is similar to the male sex hormone, testosterone. Incredibly, they are alike except for a couple of atoms. Is this just a chemical coincidence, or have the romantics been right all along? Underneath, are we all just animals? In our brains, smell signals must pass beyond our primitive brain to our conscious mind. No matter how tempting, we cannot be led by the nose. The air around us is filled with a symphony of conflicting smells and sensations. We may never understand them, but we cannot ignore the elusive mix of mystery and memory that is the power of smell.